to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hello, hello, Laura. Hi, Rose. <laughs> um, are you excited about our chat today? Yes, I am. Yes. I'm, I'm a bit excited too because um, we're going to be diving into goal setting for artists um, and for artpreneurs. Do you like the fancy term? Yeah, that's kind of a cool term. Is it a thing? <laughs> or a... <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I've heard it around the trap somewhere. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we were actually having a chat um, prior to the recording um, about all of this sort of goal setting stuff. Um, and you were talking about profit first, which I've heard of, but can you take, what, what's the deal? That's a book, right? Yeah, it's a book and it's about setting up your finances. So you take profit first from your business and it really inspired me and uh, that's what I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Just, I, I haven't even finished the book yet, but I've sort of figured out my percentages and like what I can uh, take from the business. And it's actually got me really excited because then it's almost, yeah, every quarter you sort of give yourself a bonus from that profit percentage. Um, instead of like doing your tax return and at, at the end of the year, you've got your um, profit and loss and it's like, oh, where is that profit? It's just numbers on a piece of paper, <laughs> but it, it's actually planning for that tangible profit and doing like nice things to reward yourself. So, yeah. And in a way, because I've been doing a lot of reading and thinking about um, sort of money mindset stuff lately as well, um, almost planning for profit first forces you into visualizing that outcome mm -hmm. yes. and it's like a positive mindset right yeah it is yeah so I've been feeling quite inspired and motivated um to to do that and work on that and also increasing my revenue as well so yeah, it's, um, I love reading books and usually I, I don't get quite to the end. I actually just start the action <laughs> steps. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're kind of similar why, in that why way. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> oh, it's like, yes, this is great. This is an awesome concept. I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it is totally a thing. I'm the same. And actually I often beat myself up about it. Like not in, not in a big way, but just like, why am I not reaching the end of these books? They're awesome. I love them, but it's just, it's almost the focus. Like I can't, can't stay focused for long enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's also like, you just want to implement the positive change right away and you know, you're a busy mum too. Like you've got lots to juggle with your art business and everything like that. So doing all that personal development and reading and working on yourself, that takes time too. So, you know, yeah. if you get the cliff notes, and yeah. if you, if you want to implement it, why not? Just go with it. <laughs> Just smash it, bro. Like I said, <laughs> I said that to, yeah. I said that to Laura I said that to you just before recording and <laughs> it gave Laura a giggle so I thought yeah. I'd throw it in <laughs> uh, and so um you were talking about some good goal setting and planning things that you've been working on uh during this week as well and I was super interested because the profit first works on um, a quarterly basis. Ah. So then it's something that I could tie into with my goal setting, which I haven't really thought about this new tax year. And um, I've just sort of been, there's lots of different things that I am doing and putting out there into the world, like with my workshops, my new creative wellness workshops and things like that. But I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and just sort of like planning or like putting things out there like a few months in advance, but there's no like structure around my specific goals. So that's why I was really interested in what you were talking about. Did you want to share what you've been working on? Yeah, totally. Um, and I hear you. So this is actually the first time I've ever done some quarterly planning and it's quite amusing. Um, it's quite amusing actually, like in terms of an activity and what comes out 
out as you sort of dump all your ideas onto paper. Okay, so you were talking about your profit first book, right? And so it's all about, that's like financial goal setting as well, right? Yeah. So that's a goal anyway. But yeah, so you have your financial goal setting. And then the next thing is yeah, how to get clear on all of your goals and then how to make a plan to make them happen. And I think like your, that first step of setting your like financial goal, I think is really, really powerful. Anyway, we can go, we're going to go more into money mindset. I think we've talked about this like in future episodes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you're, this is my idea, this is my, this is the model for goal setting. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> quarterly goal setting. So every quarter, if you can sit down and you get a big piece of paper and you just note down all of the, it's not so much ideas, but all the things you want to do and achieve, um, in the next three months. And so this is the intriguing and funny part because, the things that are on my list, as some, as some of them are just so unrelated. <laughs> and I reflected back on my like, why is this even on my list? But anyway, so you do this huge list, um, the sky's the limit. You can talk about um, at different areas of your life. Like it's not only art, but it can be health and well-being, relationships, spirituality, whatever it is. So goals um, and ideas and actions. And then you finesse them into three outcomes only. So three goals only. And so goals tend to be things with a number related to it. So something like increase my profit or mm -hmm. increase my salary like you're doing. Yeah. Um, and put a number on it if you can um, to X amount. Um, or they could be increase your Instagram followers, increase your email list, increase your art output to, you know, six artworks over the mm -hmm. next 12 months, whatever it is. So outcomes are, have numbers on it. And then after you've done that, then you need to write a list of nine or 10 different um, actions that relate to those outcomes. So nine or 10 total actions that relate to those outcomes and those outcomes only, nothing else. And so this is, this in my instance, this is why it was so funny because I did this and then um, I caught myself painting a piano for, for my local council. I'm like, this is great fun, but this has nothing to do with my goals. <laughs> like, <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> it's a fun, creative, really unusual opportunity. That's why you're doing it. <laughs> totally. And, you know, like somebody, um, I was talking about goals with someone else the other day and she said, so what do you do now? I said, well, I've, <laughs> I've committed to painting a piano and it's fun. So I'm still going to do it. Um, but it's just good to be aware that that doesn't plug into my three key goals necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun outside project that I have committed to. So it will still happen and I'm still going to enjoy it. You can't yeah. stop me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'm super interested to dive in for myself to do this process for goal setting for the quarter. Um, and we'd made up a little worksheet or a workbook beforehand as well, using these principles for planning. And um, we'll put a link in the show notes um, so you can have access to that and download that if that's something that you would like to do for yourself. Um, so with your goals, I'm just curious, you said that, uh, you could put personal things in there as well, like outside of your creative practice. I know mm -hmm. this topic was planning for creatives, but in your goals, is it all connected to your business or do you have some personal goals in your list of three? Mine are actually all business. Um, but that is just for me. I do have a little side note for me, just that I want to continue with my morning routine, um, which is really hard for me to do. Um, but it comes back to this idea that we talked about before um, about the um, just do it anyway, you know, like it's really, it is hard to do. You've got to battle. I've got to battle my kids for, you know, these 10 minutes for myself in the morning, um, but I've got to do it anyway. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, so anyway, so that's my little personal thing, but you can have things in there um, like improving your health or your strength or um, yeah, other things as well. So it's your, your, your re like as a whole human, your top three goals for the next yeah. three months, you know, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. So it could include those other things. 
Mm, that's kind of a, exciting. I actually really want to dive into it now. <laughs> you can do it. Like journaling and <laughs> we're recording a podcast, right? <laughs> I know. I could give you all, like we could all go, go quiet for two minutes <laughs> um, and just write that big list because this is the thing, like I, I was so, I remembered who I was chatting to about this the other day. It was another artist called Sandra Gale, who is beautiful, by the way. Go and check her out on Instagram. Um, but we were talking about um, this the whole idea that in art, to make it in art, you need to have the multiple, multiple revenue streams, but you can't have 20. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. I think it's that balance somewhere in between, you know. So, yes, you need multiple revenue streams, I believe, um, especially at the start. Mm -hmm. And then, but just not so many that you can't actually achieve anything. Yeah, it's about like honing in and having that focus and, mm. you know, um, having like a few little things that you're working on at once rather than, because I know artists, they just have so many ideas. And that's the amazing thing about being a creative person. You do, you have so many creative um, ideas. But yeah, I think I really like the idea of doing that whole first brain dump writing everything down and then like highlighting and really um, just becoming more clear on the direction and the certain major three things that you want to achieve. Totally. And, you know, if you do achieve those things and you get to the end of the list and there's still time left in your, you know, quarter in your three months, you can add more things on and just go for it, you know, but just mm -hmm. to set yourself up to stay on track Mm -hmm. and to achieve the bigger things first mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of value in that yeah so a note for overachievers and oh. people that want to break the rules and put like lots more than 10 action steps what what would you suggest for people that are um going through this process and yeah. finding it hard just to limit themselves in terms of the steps that they need to take I think that is the hard one. That is, that is the, you know, like you've got to set yourself up to actually be able to achieve. So I think this sort of reduced list um, approach works. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you can do all those extra things. And then also I like the idea of keeping, I've got 5 million notebooks. I've got a problem, but so maybe don't keep 5 million notebooks, but if you had a Trello board or a mm. Google doc or something where you put all those extra ideas, there's awesome ideas that you yeah. think of all the time, every day, all day, mm -hmm. um, put them in there. So they're not disappearing. The ideas are still there and they'll be there for you when you actually have space for them because yep. we like to think we're superhuman but <laughs> we're mm. not <laughs> i know mm. um from a perspective of someone that has a chronic illness too i have to rein myself in with all my big lofty dreams and goals and my mantra that i always come back to is i'm playing the long game so sometimes you know we have a tendency to like shoot for the stars and do big amazing things like maybe if people are going through this process and they've got some like really amazing hard hitting goals like think about like how could I spread that out throughout the year like do you have to achieve all of these big massive goals in this quarter or could you um, spread it out over the 12 months and then just sort of, you know, really hone in on like one particular thing in your art business per quarter as well. Mm. I just thought I'd add that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, or how to do it in a sustainable way because yeah. I'm pretty like high energy and pretty excited, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I like to hit something pretty hard, but um, but it's important that you don't then crash and burn afterwards. So it's, mm -hmm. yes, it's finding out, finding that mm -hmm. balance again. Yeah. And it depends on the complexity of the goal. Like if mm -hmm. it's something like how much time is that going to take up realistically in your life? And then how much time do you have to dedicate to the other areas in your life as well? Yeah, so I'm just sort of sitting here also wondering what's on your list. I want to ask what's on your list. And then also to speculate what might be on our listeners' lists because yeah. I think our listeners tend to be, I think, and listeners, if I'm wrong, write us <laughs> a message, write us a DM, mm. um, but definitely creative people who create 
at home and it's just whether they are creating or maybe in the studio but whether they're creating um for galleries or whether they're just creating for themselves or whether they're just sort of starting to get into you know wanting to sell their work so I think there's like a different I don't know different stages so like maybe on the list would be to create my first collection of yeah. artworks yep or develop a creative routine what yep. else do you think would be on our listeners lists um yeah like maybe sell some work on Instagram like release a <laughs> A small collection to mm. sell like sell my first artworks um yeah well we're, we're on youtube now so please send us um a comment in, on our video or send us a dm let us know like what um goals you are working towards like what you want to achieve in the next three months it'd be super cool to start some conversations around that um i was thinking um because i haven't done the workbook we've mm. just created the template for people to download it would be cool to um do it live I'd actually like to <laughs> I'd like to work through um the questions and you know sort of the brainstorming and stuff like that too. yeah so well, maybe we, we should make it. a time I know <laughs> maybe we should make a time to um do it and then you know people could um set up and do it together oh, with us. Oh, I see. Who knows? I like that Like an accountability sort of session. Yes. Mm. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, so like what I do, I just have to, I just have to ask, what is on your list though, Laura? Uh, your okay. 5 million well, ideas. Yeah. Well, I do have 5 million ideas. I'm working yes. on implementing this profit first into my business. So that's um, I feel like, you know, I'm at the starting stages of that. So probably I need to finish reading the book, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's um, a good one. I, that's yeah. an action. Mm -hmm. I've already set up my bank accounts, though. I went to the NAB, um, the National Australia Bank, and I set up my three new accounts. Mm -hmm. So I'm just road testing that. I've also got my Nurture Creative Wellness Workshop. So they're in-person workshops in Ballarat. And that's in um, July and August. They're coming up. I've also got um, potentially continuing sessions. So blocks of four creative uh, wellness or creative for self-care. And I want to invite people into my studio as well. So the nurture workshops are at an external space in Ballarat. And then, uh, yeah, I'd really like to have groups small groups of lovely women into my studio. So that's towards the end of the year. Um, and yeah, probably more well-being things because since getting back from overseas, my routine for walking has sort of slip, slipped off a little bit. And uh, my morning pages, I've started back up again and they're really beneficial. And yeah, I just feel like that is my morning routine just really like solidifying that. So I think just going off the cuff, like I think they're the major things that I want to focus on uh, working on. Yeah, because actually when this particular um, episode goes live, you'll be running your first nurture workshop on the 23rd. Is that right? Yeah, of July? so I think there should be only a few days. I'm not sure how many tickets there are left at, at recording. I do have two spots, but um, they might be filled. But I do have another class the next month in August. So get in touch. And if they're really popular, I'll just keep um, running them because – like, I'm so excited. I, I love the process and it's really special to me, especially incorporating that art um, for well-being aspect and really like digging into ourselves and doing lots of like, lovely reflection. And yeah, it's quite holistic and it's just nice to be with people after COVID and not being able to be in groups for so long. So yeah. yeah and, and Laura, that beautiful energy around your workshops is just like, so epically present like in your like in the way you talk about it in your social <laughs> media as well you've been sharing some really beautiful videos about what your what is planned for the workshops oh. um yeah so it's really beautiful so um beautiful listeners if you haven't hopped on board to um join a workshop um or even just to have a look at laura's you know page where she shares more information about it go and check it out um and don't forget to join laura's mailing list um there's a little bit of a button on her website so go and join the fun yeah. 
yeah. stay, stay in the loop. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about briefly my goals, which I want to do more work on. So I'm going to, once we log off, I, I will spend some time uh, digging into that workbook um, in my own time. But for you, you've already done the process, Ross. So <laughs> you, you've identified three business goals. I have. I'm trying to find them on my computer. <laughs> but this is this is actually another thing, right? So mm. I did a proper business plan, um, like, I don't know, six, seven months ago or whatever. And my business coach, who is also lovely, Robin Soreen, check her out on Instagram too. Um, she, she asked me, how's your business plan going? I'm like, um, yeah, I just have to find it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Ros, you don't know where your business plan is. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so did you write it and then just uh, forget about it? <laughs> well, it's just yeah, pretty much. It's like in the depths of my um, Google Drive. This is a thing. So I don't know. Maybe we need to talk about organization for artists, and you can help me. What do you think? Yeah, I'm <laughs> um, getting a file system in place. Oh yeah, I don't know. I need I need more than just a system. I need counseling. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, miraculously, I have found my goals. Okay, mm-hmm. you ready? Mm-hmm. So I had I did a big brain dump and I have lots and lots of different ideas and you know what's interesting out of all the ideas I think I had 15 ideas and things that I wanted to do there are only one two three oh no one two three four five of those 15 things that are relevant to my goals that I decided on later okay so there's like yeah so there's 10 things that are just I want to do but they are not going to help me to get closer to my goals so I don't know. You might find the same. But um, yeah, so mine is I've got a goal around um, profit stuff as well. So profit first. And then I want to grow my Art for the Heart members. Um, And I also want to grow my email list. So they're my three goals. And then I also have some lifestyle goals that I added in there as well. So that's my morning routine, which I mentioned before. Um, and then I've added in a daily walk, have not done that yet. It's, I still, <laughs> still can't get time and then drink water as well. Very simple. Great one. Um, very simple, but a basic human need, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then my outputs. So it's all linked and I've actually color coded mine. So I've got, um, I think, you know, for my income, I've got a, um, hang on, I'm counting things. I've got five particular actions that I've highlighted in a certain color. So that's paint, paint six artworks within the next quarter, um, increase my NDIS students, for example, mm-hmm. um, run t- two or three more challenges, um, mm-hmm. work on improving art for the heart, which is an eternal thing that I'm always, always trying to do. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Lots of things, but um, yeah, and they've, I've just matched them all to the outcomes and to the goals um, so that it's all clear and um, focused, mm-hmm. which is very hard for creatives, I think, to do. Yeah. So mm. you found it this really beneficial for like getting that clarity um, yeah. because you've never done like the planning, planning process really before or just sort of yeah going with the flow yeah that's exactly it and and, um, I mean there isn't a degree of that right you've got to have an art business like whether you're not I don't know art business just means you're selling right but you've got to have an art practice or an art business that is aligned with you right so that is going with the flow so you've got to have a bit of that flow Mm -hmm. um but then I think when you get up to a point especially in especially in, I think, especially in art business, feel free to argue with me. (laughs) (laughs) But I think especially when you get into the art business space and you're selling, you've got to try to hone a little bit so that you can get towards towards your goals or achieve your goals. And and I think it's very hard to do if you're not focusing at all, if you're just following your heart entirely and there's Mm -hmm. no focus. I don't know. What do you reckon? <laughs> no, no, I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> Having that clarity and direction. Sorry. And like, <laughs> that's all right. We've got. Turn off my camera. And, no, no. <laughs> this is the real stuff, guys. <laughs> For those of you that are listening, yeah, you probably don't get that. But yep. yeah, come over to YouTube and see what happens. There you it's go. It's true. <laughs> 
um yeah so I've lost my trail of mm. thought yeah but we do need clarity in terms of like moving towards like what we want to achieve and especially if you want to make business money in um in art business like yeah there needs to be some sort of focus and structure and like really um considered um action steps I think so and then thinking about people who don't sell their work maybe it's more um that you know that focus is needed to uh, what's the word? <laughs> I can't think of the word. <laughs> to like, build your skills. Yeah, to yeah. Have a structure, like mm. you know what I'm trying to say. To learn and grow, and yeah, to constantly evolve. If you're just yeah in it, in it for a hobby or whatever, like you obviously you're listening to this podcast because you're creative and you're wanting to work on your practice. Mm. So um yeah, I guess you know in terms of setting a routine and making that space for that uh, creative well being in your in your life. So. Mm. 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 <laughs> much, much, much thinking. And then we were thinking about as well, um, because we chatted earlier about the next steps. So like you do your profit first mm -hmm. side of things mm -hmm. and then you do your goal setting high level. Like it's high, it's high level goal setting, right? Because you're choosing just three broad goals for yep. the next three months. And then you've got your action points. And then I guess the next step, which we haven't made a workbook for this part, but mm. um, would be about turning that into a plan, you know, things like yeah. getting out a calendar and mm -hmm. working out your dates for you, you know, working out your dates for your workshops, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. taking into consideration your energy levels and making mm -hmm. sure you're building an art business around you as an individual and yeah. how mm -hmm. you want to work. Yeah. Um, and then after that, then working like on a smaller scale. So daily, like setting mm. three top goals and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. That's mm. what I did for my exhibition. I did that planning um, ahead. So I did get the calendar out and I did mark the days um, that I was working or had other commitments. And then the ones that I had space to develop my work. And then I had a running list of yeah, all the action steps and everything. So yeah, physically getting it into your calendar and making that detailed plan is going to be like the next, yeah, the next step and that works. And I'm doing that at the moment with one of my clients, the art mentoring clients that I have in the studio. Um, she's working towards an exhibition. So you will be getting the calendar out very soon, the next couple of weeks, and we're going to be making that plan and mm. organising all the different steps in the lead up to her first solo show. So that's kind of exciting, isn't it? It's very, and I'm actually making notes going planning for a show because mm. we should talk about that like for a first exhibition or something uh, like that. Yeah, that's a great topic. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments if that's something that you want to hear about because yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got lots of different um, like tips and tricks because I've done it twice now, two solo shows. Mm. Um, and I learned something every time <laughs> so yeah we always do yeah, yeah and and like with these experiences we always do and it's just trying to remember that we're always learning and mm -hmm. you're not not ever I actually don't think you will ever get something like that perfectly right mm -hmm. because it's not actually achievable mm -hmm. um <laughs> and we're all learning and next time we'll just do better you know um yeah anyway I've been I've been telling myself that in a different context <laughs> but yes <laughs> Um, I want to uh, bring up and remind you that we were going to read a review. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I've written it down in capital letters on my notebook in front of me. Read review. But then you know what's happened is I flipped the page and <laughs> now I can't see it. So thank you. Okay, so um, we do have a review. Um, did you want to read it or do you want me to read it? Uh, I think you're very good at oh. articulating, Rose. Thank you. I just... So you say all the right things. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we have a review from the beautiful Tessa Bartholomew and that rhymes. I just realized that's really nice. Um. Um, so Tessa <laughs> Bartholomew is over on Instagram and she's an artist as well. So go and check her out. I think her on Instagram, she's Tessa.Marie, M-A-R-I-E dot art. 
Mm-hmm. And in her very kind review, she has said, this podcast is a must listen for any creative. Roz and Laura are so relatable and honest with their approach, tackling topics we sit in our studios and mull over day to day. I've had this podcast in my ears over the last few days. And as a new full-time artist, not overly used to working alone, it feels like I have them keeping me company and cheering me on along the way. Love your work and the podcast. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> She's a bit sweet. Thanks, yeah, Tessa. That's really nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thanks for the reminder, Laura. That's terrible. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I think it's, you know, our brains are so full with what we need to chat about and all mm. the different things <laughs> that we yeah. sort of I think we we forget sometimes. Yeah. Mm. And you know, um, YouTube is very new. So we'd love to start to have some, some conversations over there. So definitely give us some feedback. Um, cause I'm not an Apple user, so it's not, um, on front of mind to be, um, um, digging into those reviews. So anywhere w- is useful for us to let us know your feedback and how you're finding the podcast. Definitely. Um, and make sure you share with us as well. If you are another creative and you have an Instagram account, um, or even a Facebook page, let us know know the link um, Mm -hmm. because we love to support all creatives so we're very happy to share that link um, with our listeners so that you might get a couple of extra likes or follows Mm. well that was a good chat today Ros. I'm I'm glad (laughs) thank you for forcing me to find my quarterly plan I need to print it out that's what I need to do and pin it on the wall yeah that's a really good idea having Mm. that always there in your studio so it reminds you of what you're working towards All right. All right. I'll do it. (laughs) All right. Well, listeners, thank you so much for listening today. Make sure that you go and grab the free workbook that we have put together for you. Um, The link will be below this video or below this audio, wherever you're listening or watching. Um, And we will be back in about one fortnight. Yeah. Cool. Yay. See you then. Bye. Bye.